Hello, welcome back. It's me, apparently. Uh, and today we will be uh, doing the self analysis of uh, what makes Super Metroid such a thrilling experience. Uh, the video I released last week, if I remember correctly. Um, and this time, I think uh, the the more self analysis is going to be a lot more streamlined. I think it's going to be a lot easier to really dive into um, the video itself since I can actually watch it and not have to worry about false copyright claims. Uh, that that will make my life a living hell. Very nice. Very you know, great. Um, so with that being said, uh, we can just I think we can just get into it. I think I like the the utility of just the intro Super Metroid. I mean, it's it's Super Metroid, right? It's it's a video exploring that more thriller, thrilling aspect of the game. And I think just showing the intro straight up was the right decision on my part. Oh, and then I think some stuff comes from the side here. The Super Metroid, the 1994 Super Nintendo classic that helped lead the charge. I think it's really interesting here also is, is my voice is still not where it eventually it, it is interesting to see the development of the voice since recording this like months ago. Uh let's see, when did I finish this project? October? Maybe September, actually. Uh charge so in developing what would come to be known as the Metroidvania genre of video game. People are very familiar with the game and everyone in their m Yes, the Super Metroid videos that are out right now, uh, videos I haven't actually watched, besides this one, uh, which I think the video game animation studies are like really super interesting videos. There's uh, some dread or uh, video related videos as well, like how Super Metroid creates dread, how Metroid games as a whole create dread, which I think is like really interesting. And I think it's, there's definitely some level of inspiration for uh, my own video as well. Although it's definitely exploring a different direction, I think. For sure. um, my mother has made great. a video on it. So while I am likely adding on to the po the, the mother, I don't know. Uh, I wonder if I'll explore the intro section. Like here, it's like. I want to explore why I think Super Metroid is an incredible experience of the game. So, what makes it so thrilling to so thrilling to play through? I love English, and I didn't really like it. Doesn't really drive straight into it, which I think I might try to explore more in the future. Where this there's like I'll talk about the game, talk about you know there's many con pieces of content on Super Metroid projects made um, about its design. And the game as a whole. Sorry. Hopefully I don't yawn anymore like last time. Um, so it's just it's something to explore. I think one of the interesting parts about this video is I think this video as a whole in terms of production, and especially uh, the more visual aesthetic, is, is much... Um, just much better, much higher. There's a lot more stuff that gets thrown into it that I'm really proud of, to be honest. Which will get a pile of Super Metroid videos. I wanted to explore why I think Super Metroid is an incredible experience. This is a bit choppy. I think I think I would have done something different here in the future, just because I think it's it's too choppy. I think the I think the idea of an animated thumbnail is super cool, uh, but I think here it's just a little too choppy. Specifically, a thriller uh, and what makes and it. I so think even this stuff in the middle is a little so hard thrilling to, to play through. Deal is. The last Metroid is in captivity. The galaxy is at peace. Super Metroid begins with narration from its amazing protagonist, Samus Aran. She revisits her previous adventures and states that after her fight against the space pirates and their leader, Mother Brain, on planet Zeebs, she journeyed to the Metroid homeworld SR388 to exterminate the dangerous organisms for good and prevent them from potentially destroying galactic civilization. I think this is a bad cut. Um, I, I understand why I did it originally, uh, because it leads straight into, you know, the, the hatch larva, uh, that she, you know, that becomes a main point of this game, uh, where, cause obviously the, 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 the space laboratory where she leaves the larva 
or the the Metroid, uh, more accurately, that you know the baby one that doesn't do anything, uh, is a pretty main part of uh, you know, the intro of this game in the first place. The first level, right? And I understand why I did it, but I think it's just the cut's not very good. Uh, all this is a summary, but I will say I think the summary here is pretty good, all things considered. Um, it's pretty quick. I think this whole early beginning section is actually pretty good. I think it's one of my best kind of like intro sections that I ha that I've probably had so far. But um, yeah, it's very quick. It's, it's it's good. I think that's also because uh, one of the things I wanted to improve on was this project, and especially the next project. Uh, was I want to make shorter videos just so I'm able to put them out more consistently. So like by this point, most likely the next project is, is not going to be out until a month from the release of the original Super Metroid video. The one we're watching here, obviously. Because it's just, I, I don't have enough time to really push it out. And, and that video is going to be like 11 minutes long, right? So it's just, it, it takes too long. And this video is obviously 25 minutes, the last one before this Yu Yu Hakusho video. 25 minutes uh it just takes too long to to make so and i just i don't have that type of time i don't have the subscriber count we're, we're at 86 subscribers sometimes 87 maybe eight something yeah sometimes 87 not 85 um and hopefully you know we'll be able to continue to improve uh i think i want to do more social outreach stuff it's just uh and my anxiety for that stuff is click it's up there uh, and i i, I just it's hard for me to do that, but I want to get better. I think there are ways to go about it that make things better and have more people aware of the stuff I make, which is good. That that's a whole other, oh, other situation. But basically, uh, when I was writing the script for this, I was a lot more um conscious of word count. Uh, I was a lot. I was trying to keep it within like a more limited amount of space, uh, for like each section. Uh, so for example, chapter one is. 279 words overall i think and i think that also helps make things more concise and it helps keep things more engaging so things don't go on too long like this the, the, the video i'm recording now the self-analysis is definitely a lot more open and it's just me talking whatever never whatever um and it's less more refined like these videos you are. And I'm drinking water and yawning. <sighs> this is annoying. However, she would leave a recently hatched I think we can go past it, I think. Six. Oh, we're here. civilization. But almost as quickly as they had made these discoveries, good. disaster struck. Just as Samus was leaving to hunt for a new yeah, bounty, words she are still picked up a distress pronounced. signal. From the station properly in certain cases. something has gone horribly wrong something has gone horribly wrong that's another thing to that I, i'm trying to be more conscious of and i think it's just going to get better over time and it's just hard to be consistent because i have to retrain my brain and the kind of muscle memory of my mouth to be able to like properly pronounce words in a way that's has full clarity uh where the the ends in particular are are pronounced and like actually there and not kind of how it is through this video and you you haka show i think even the roy video um the old one where that's kind of an issue uh you know covid uh more personal stuff that prevented me from conversation also just like a lack of awareness of that it wasn't until I was really starting to record stuff more where I became aware of how my voice sounded and the way I pronounced things. To be fair, I don't think a lot of other people might catch from others because I think our mind is kind of filling in the gap a lot of the time. But I don't know. Uh, I'm I'm glad it's it's gotten better, I think, for sure. I love the title cards. The title cards, I think, were all great. 
uh, throughout this one. This one in particular is really cool. I like this part. I love the intro. I, it, it's so good. I, I really like how I did them. I also love this part where I had the the Majora's Mask, I think, like day change sound effect. So I'll have like the, the Super Metroid item collect. Do, 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 do. And it switches to this, the subtitle. Uh, I really like how I did that. I think it's it kind of has this tense atmosphere to it, I think. And I, I really like that because that's kind of what I wanted to set the mood and tone for for the video. And I think I, I think it just does a good job of that. And I'm, I'm pretty proud that I was able to do that and kind of come up with that. And I don't know, it just makes me really happy. I like this section. I love chapter one as a whole. Chapter one is really Samus good. Samus enters the space station and cautiously heads down this long vertical shaft. Ah, this is this part's a little fucked. So you see this, this that moved just then? Um, it's like off. Uh, and that's because it's a little lazy. We're, well, not necessarily lazy because the, the, the actual process, which we'll get to, um, I might I might save that for a little bit, like a behind the scenes and this difficulty of like doing the really cool visual shit that I eventually do. Um, like uh, there, there's a chance I actually might make a full video on the, the chapter one behind the scenes and like what i did for for that like countdown section i think specifically like i might do that since i i have to have like a month uh, i think i'm not gonna be able to finish the next project in time for that like three week period so i think it might be good to do just a countdown um a video like behind the scenes of that because that also just is going to take a while to like articulate and explain because it's just there's a lot of stuff that went into it and it's just a lot of tedious stuff i had to do and it was really annoying but i think it really worked out and it looks great which we'll get we'll get to again and this is awesome. and if you've seen the video and you see it and you, i think you would agree it looks really cool it's got a lot of crazy shit going on um but, we'll keep going. but you see the sides are not matched up uh because well i just couldn't figure i, I just that was the first thing i did actually and it's just i didn't I want to spend much time with it. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. The research you don't really facility. see it. It's eerily it? quiet. With only machine beeps and a heavy oh, ventilation to accompany so us as we make our way That's through. That's a cool effect. After rooms of horizontal and vertical progression. That One of the things nice. I did in this video as well, I think, although I think I stopped doing it at some point, or maybe I kept doing it, was the thing it's a lot of zoomed in stuff. Cause I, I tried to keep it as in, like as a camera movement. Where it's moving, you know, things are, it's more close in rather than just like the more zoomed out. Plus it's like, this is a, this is a 1080p video, not a 4x3 video. Uh, like the actual screen for Super Metroid. Like zoomed in, I moved the camera, Link you'll see. provided with stairs. It moves. We oh, finally reached the in. laboratory. The scientists have been killed and now lay was in their own blood upon the ground. The last remaining Metroid has been uh, I think... One of the things I'm going to do better next time is I think I have a better idea of how to do uh, these types of borders. Uh, that is going to be better uh, moving forward. I think I've already figured out how to do that for the next project that also involves uh, having these images kind of borders. And I want to be able to do the more border stuff in particular moving forward for other projects. So I think this is a good test run. And like I had storyboarded it out. And I, I think it it's okay for what it is. But I think there are improvements I would like to be made. Uh, I think, for example, I'm not going to round it. I think I'm going to keep it uh, in that more rectangular, firm shape. Captured, forcibly removed from its capsule. Samus continues on in this That's bleak cool. environment and eventually reaches a silent, dead-end room. Where wait, actually, wait. I'm going to go back. Before. Uh, so one of the things you also notice is that I, I, I kind of mess around with a lot of the orientation stuff throughout this video to make it look a lot more visually engaging and more tense in certain aspects. And I think that really works out for it, especially later. Um, but I, I think there's potential argument uh, to be made that I do it a little too much. Cause it's just, it's cool. I think it's like, uh, I, and I, I'm pretty heavily inspired by this Legend of Zelda video, um, Ocarina of Time video. It, it's super like, has a lot of these visual stuff going for it. It's so cool. It's super interesting. I'd love to like talk about it so much more because it was a pretty major reason why I want to make content like this because I thought it was just so 
so good. Like it just made me view Ocarina of Time as like a whole different way. And it was just so visually interesting. It just blew my mind. It was just like, whoa. And I think it's, they haven't uploaded in like since that video, I think, unfortunately. Uh, it's it's so cool. I love it. It's a great game. Uh, anyway, we leave this on in this bleak intense. environment and eventually reaches a silent dead end room where she. Yeah, I mean, this is a pretty tense like section, I think. He finds the Metroid on the ground no alone. music either. But that quiet loneliness lasts only for a short while, before a draconic monster appears. Boom. Ridley. Accompanying Ridley is his banger theme. Yeah, was music. I think that was a pretty good intro to Ridley, at least in this initial confrontation. Um, I think I tried to be a little bit more flavory regarding my scripting here. Like, Samus continues on in this bleak environment, and eventually reaches a silent, dead and room he finds the metroid on the ground alone but that quiet loneliness lasts only for a short while before a draconic monster appears ridley you know etc 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 um and i think there's there's more flavor text i would like to implement a little bit more but i think i just it's gonna take time to keep improving and improving on that give it a bit more natural uh, type of feel to it, I think, also. I mean, it's just going to take practice. It's okay. That's fine. I, I think that one of the things with these videos is I want to do better at realizing they're not perfect. And that's one of the reasons I have the self-analysis stuff, and I'm doing the self-analysis behind the scenes, because I want to improve, and I want to get better, and I want to make the best stuff I can, but I also understand that um, perfection is... A, just not obtainable, period, arguably, even though I want it so badly. But it's also just not healthy, where you just need to, you need to keep pushing stuff out there. You need to, you need to put it out there. You got to have the, the, the fortitude and confidence and comfort to put something out there, even if it's not perfect, even if it's very flawed. And you just keep improving. Uh, and I think the analysis videos and behind the scenes is just a way for me to deal with that insecurity myself, which, you know. Is how it is. Game that sets the mood for this confrontation. Jump, aim your arm cannon, and shoot Ridley in the face. Or technically the just take damage off. until he leaves with the Metroid and starts the self destruct sequence of the space the section station. Six. I'll, I'll just One minute. A single tense minute is all you have to escape from the station before it explodes. A common situation I mean, in the Metroid franchise. The only change between traversing the area before and now is that there is some steam being released that stuns you for a little bit. And a vertical shaft back where we entered is tilting to the right. Considering this is only chapter 1 of the video, Samus clearly makes an escape. We watch the station explode and Samus and her ship speeds right. off. I'll let it go. Uh, great section. This, 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 this thing, this section is awesome. I, I'm so proud. Of the work I did here, uh, I think the the stuff going down like quickly before uh, before you like you settle on Samus at the bottom, you just climb to the top is cool. I think uh, this aspect's really cool where you're you're having see watch Samus kind of like go across uh, the thing and it has that tense escape from the station. Movement. Yeah, yeah. Uh, obviously, before it explodes. This shit was super fucking hard. Well, I'll get to it eventually, and we'll t I'll talk a lot more about it. Uh, in the the behind the scenes, especially the behind the scenes specifically for this section, uh, that I'm definitely gonna think I'm for sure gonna do now. It's just it's just so much, um, it's so cool. Oh my gosh, it's so hard, but it's so cool. I mean, look at this, dude. It's just I mean, this is clearly not something you can that you're not gonna have like in the game itself, right? This doesn't happen. If you've played the game, you know it's much close. You know it's closer you have that you you don't see the whole laboratory i mean samus moves across the screen situation. like that where the the camera stays put and it's just a what kind of more wide shot i think i think that's the situation in the metro it's so sick oh my gosh i mean it's the, 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 the countdown oh it's so cool Dude, I'm, I'm gushing about my own work here and I'm, uh, I, I'm taking it i'm taking it i think it's super cool it was a lot of hard work i'm proud of it all right you can't take that away from me no one can not even myself and I'm, I'm taking it. It was so cool. Ship speeds off to find the Metroid, Ridley, and the rest out. of the space pirates, leading her to land back on planet Z.
All right, here we go. I think this was pretty cool. Although I think I'll change the color of the title part, but I think it's fine. Yeah, the blues is a little weird. Ah, yes, foreshadowing. Ah, ha, ha, ha. I'm so funny. Foreshadowing. If you played Super Metro, you know the planet blows up. Oh, I love this. I love this part, actually. This is, this is pretty cool. Um, when when I was thinking of how to do chapter two, because I think I wanted to separate into sections. Obviously, you have the intro, you have the base station series, which is kind of the major point. Uh, but then I also wanted to go like, okay, well, here's Plan Z, here's all the areas, except for the last one. Chapter three is Samus. Sorry? Chapter three is Samus herself. Uh, chapter four is the bosses. Chapter five is like the last area and some final little commentation stuff. Uh, but when I was thinking about like, okay, how do I introduce this? I had like a I had this section, right? I have uh the first paragraph like talking about Zebes and it being like first and like how Samus travels the game. A very expand I mean it's you know it's a Metroid Bounty of any game. It's super expansive vertically, horizontally, it's everywhere. You just go so many places, it's so far they're all very like very defined creative and i remember during the the making of this part and i think the storyboarding i came up and i i had been watching a lot of uh, not just bike videos and i still you know great content incredible you should absolutely watch it uh you will hate and i i mean i i'm i'm from houston right and he has that whole video about why he's stuck man after watching that video it's like bro i hate I hate that he's so bad and it's true. It's all true. Um, but the, the main reason it I took that, I took it a lot of the way he does and shows areas in his videos as kind of inspiration for how to approach Planet uh, Samus. This the beginning part of Chapter 2, um, where you have, you know, the rain. Because it sucks. You just have the rain. Zebes is a large and diverse planet for Samus to travel through for the rest of the game, with five core sections and a final area for the end of the game. Each is incredibly expansive, both vertically and horizontally, and the first of which is Criteria, where Samus lands to begin her mission. Criteria's music starts off very airy and mysterious, but changes once the space pirates emerge to a more tense and sinister tone. It's visually themed in dark dirt and patchy grass due to its surface location, becoming more and more mechanical further oh, too zoomed in. Criteria is a testing ground for the player, this part's pretty cool opening too. up as you gain Although more and more abilities to use. Bit, obviously, Continuing yeah, from that thought, it also that? helps train the player for how it's, to engage. Luckily, a lot of these sections uh, where the, uh, the visual stuff can be a little bit scuffed, because it's just like the stuff I have to do is not only kind of difficult to implement, it's also just there's not really ways for me to do certain things if not those certain things within a more short amount of time it would take so much longer and i'm just i just i'm not willing to spend hours and hours and out further hours and hours and hours than the stuff i've already done because it is it is a lot and it's not easy and it's not the most fun thing in the world and like so obviously you'll you'll see here like this stuff the up here doesn't move and it's like just a very clear line down here with all this below moves which is still pretty cool but luckily it doesn't doesn't last very long because you're not gonna like you probably won't catch it on your first play like watch through more um, abilities to use continuing from that thought it also helps train the player for how to engage with the game as an example an early area is clearly inaccessible requiring the use of the morph ball an ability you obtain soon after and in returning back to this area that you hopefully notice when coming in, you can now pass through the small closed off path. This design helps keep the player engaged as much as possible for those potential occurrences, but also makes the game so thrilling to play through 
when the game's tone twists and turns, well, it maximizes that engagement. For instance, I think it's a good argument. I think just I think one of the main parts of the video I wanted to kind of explain and articulate was um, the fact that Super Metroid does so much to you know engage you, does so much to keep you in and keep you paying attention, and because it does that. Uh, it can utilize uh, you being so engaged in playing the game to just kind of fuck you up and do all these like potentially tense and scary and kind of creepy stuff. Uh, and it's super good at that. It's great. Um, you know, it, it's 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 got it on lock. Yeah, it's it, it it's one of the oh, sorry it's one of the main parts I wanted to articulate in the video. I think I did a pretty okay job of doing that. Obviously, I think. I mean, it's I'm not listening too much to myself, um, but I I think I do a good enough job at coming across on that. Uh, there are certain things I would change visually. I think I think um, like I might highlight that area somehow instead of just show it like that alone. I think a little bit more visual stuff out of there might be make it a little bit more engaging and like more clear. Um, besides that, the star is primarily characterized by life, as each of the biomes have a variety of set pieces like flowers or large tooth creatures. I would not uh, do the static image again. I think that was a mistake. Um, I think I think I should have just had footage of me going through those areas. Um, and have them side by side instead of doing the static image. I, I think that doesn't work as well. It's also buried in the color department. Green jungle, pinkish forest, Pink. a blue cave, redstone with monsters in the ground, and a light blue with some white. I feel the like this is not, that, that part's not as descriptive. It's not as what I would have liked. Um, I mean... It is what it is because it is like it is color coded, and it is like they're they're distinct with those colors. I I think it's the last one that kind of bothers me. I I would I'm gonna avoid that. Uh, more conscious of that type of descriptive scripting happens. And Bridgestar are also pretty hazardous as a whole, alongside more dynamic enemies than just the slicer-like enemies that appeared in the underground of Criteria. These varied dynamics result in the player having to make clear adaptations to survive and make it through effectively. A lot of the design of Bridgestar and moving forward also rewards a more experienced player. The utility of the wand jump, for instance, can give you access to a variety of items that would normally be unobtainable when you first come through the main portion of Bridgestar. The wrecked ship is the opposite of- I feel like there's, there's certain, like, I mean, I think there, in certain aspects the cuts are fine between each other, but there's some level of natural. I think, I think in particular, in that one in particular, because it just doesn't feel like it was, I hate the noise. Um, but it just doesn't feel right, because I think it's the way that paragraph ends when it talks about you know the wall jump unobtainable what is obtainable and i just don't think that works in the way i would have liked i think more natural endings something i need to be awesome i hate that i'm yawning so much it's so annoying of Brinstar regarding visual aesthetics, as instead of the varied color environments, it's all the same. It's the space pirate ship that has crashed on Zeebs after the introduction. When you first enter the ship, the lights are off, establishing this mysterious, intense atmosphere to the ship. Plus, the ghosts make you understand that it's haunted as fuck. Afterwards, the ship's electricity turns back on, allowing you to access the entirety of the ship. After what? Afterwards, 
I should have just used it eventually. Because it's like they don't know what after means. After what? Afterwards? Afterwards? In response to what? That was a fuck up on my part, I think. I mean, obviously it's after the boss, but it's like I didn't want to bring up the bosses until, you know, that chapter. I could have said something different, but like after um conflict was an enemy or uh after fulfilling certain conditions, that that would have yeah, that's duh. That would have been it. That would have been it. I should have done that. Instead of just afterwards? After what? I mean, I wonder if that's from the, the, the cut where I had a lot more originally. For a lot of these kind of sections. Um, but I ended up cutting them. Because I wanted to restructure the, uh, the project. It was originally going to be a lot longer. And it's gonna be different, but I I I quit. Um, I'm much prouder of the way it did eventually. Um, but yeah, it was a fuck up. Um, there's also a joke here. There's not much really here. I think we can. Go. There's Moria. Um, Moria is extremely interesting I like that because part. it requires you to power bomb a glass protection. It's just hard to use the map that way. Areas. Though. Of Brinstar. Meridia is built of three types of areas. It's underwater area filled with music changes weird. I think I wanted to experiment more with, with certain after effects stuff. Unfortunately here I don't slide. think it works very well. It's swamp like savanna was in the Because sand. it's just the footage I had. It's purple colored is, pipe is filled area which is frozen and Great. almost factory -like. It's like. This is Meridia requires the more time. precise utility of your jumps and unlockable abilities to make it through. The other areas tend to separate their horizontal and vertical sections between rooms, where here they are that mixed together more There's often. a lot more mixing. In One room in particular here. is quite open in its Especially design, in a couple of very rooms. long and very tall, with various parts to interact with using Samus's abilities, and multiple different directions that can be taken. Ah, the Norfair section. Actually, I think the Norfair section section is actually pretty good. Norfair's visual theme is a mix between a cavern, a castle, and ruins, all with a draconic flair. There's also this mini section of bubbles that kind of reminds me of substances found in a witch's cauldron. One of the most important parts of this area's character is the hazards involved. First, oh, yeah, this is a pretty heat interesting idea. that takes down Samus' health, then lava, which cuts it down faster and easy, easy to get stuck in, and ah, lastly, this acidic up. substance. So while later you'll have the equipment to deal with these hazards, besides the acid, Norfair already sets itself up as intimidating for the player, as existing in this area will inherently bring harm. The music of Norfair also process. really helps elevate that intimidation factor, especially with the change to lower Norfair's theme. It's creepy, and seems to constantly build this tension like something is coming. When and where you're not sure, but it definitely is. I love that. I wonder if I should have ended that with like Ridley's kind of yell. I think that would have made it cooler. Like have it have it in like that. When and where you're not sure, but it most definitely is. <sighs> and you yell. That'd be pretty fucking sick. I think that'd be cool. I should have done that. That would have made it cooler. That would have made it more tense. Would have been. That would be real cool. cool. Hey, that, 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 you know, that's what the self analysis stuff is here for. It's okay. Oh, here comes the title card. I wish my stomach was telling this. That was good for her. Hard work. That was kind of random, but I'm self conscious. What am I gonna do here? Play with Grobos. I think this is the weakest subtitle I had. This is trash. Alright. It's true, but it's trash. Could have been better. The protagonist of Ooh, the Metroid franchise is bounty hunter Samus Aran. She's quite. I think I would have changed the text moving forward. Uh, I, I just don't think it looks as good as I want it. I think there are better ways to do that. Like 
to have text pop up like that. Because just the, the glow is the problem. It just doesn't look right. Um, I'll have to experiment more. Powerful in your own right, but especially by the end of the game. Her basic abilities, oh, yeah, besides her most cool. basic movement, is running, jumping, shooting in various directions, taking damage more than twice, yeah. wall jumping, which you can do when you jump with a spin into a wall, and arguably most importantly, yes. she can moonwalk. Yeah. And it actually yeah. lets you do something really yeah. cool. Opening the Samus status menu initially brings up a bunch of empty spaces. These are the unlockable abilities you'll be able to obtain. Also, the top part of the screen is designed in a very similar way with its empty space. Samus can attain other avenues of attack as well, like missiles, super missiles, bombs, and power bombs. The bombs can also alert you to what can be destroyed, if not already, within a room. Your normal shots can be upgraded. That is These quick. shots into ice, can pass through walls. There's, some, obviously, and with there's the definitely some audio cuts that are fucked here. Uh, because just like I think the timing of things just was not working properly. Um, that is something I have actually figured out how to better deal with uh, after this project was done. Uh, and it was because uh, I figured out why audio wasn't playing uh, in my After Effects. And I, I don't think I had really done that. I hadn't. I, I had not put audio into After Effects, but now I do that more often. Now I'm like much more aware of like timing things up. I'm able to do that. And I think that was a good change. That, 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 this is why I got better at that. Need to charge up. There's also a variety of movement-based abilities Samus gains, like the famous Morph Ball, High Jump, Speed Booster, Grapple Beam, and Space Jump. Not to mention upgrades to those tools like the Spring Ball, allowing you to jump while in Morph Ball form, and the Screw Attack, which makes Space Jump do incredible damage that can destroy various breakable structures. On top of all that, there's the Suit Upgrades, like the Varia Suit, cutting damage by half and giving Heat Defense. Then the Gravity Suit, which cuts damage even further and lets you easily get through water, rather than the alternative. And lastly, there's Here's the X-Ray Scope, letting you see hidden breakable blocks and passages and reserve tanks, which I hope are self-explanatory. So why did I spend so I much time going over zoom in on Samus that, but... unlockable? Options! Samus has so many options and potential avenues of approach to engage with the I should have lowered the game. drop shadow. Game. Too you have a lot of freedom while playing as Samus, and you can the do so, so low. much. I think that fighting no, enemies and high making high your high way high through high. the game is incredibly engaging because of that control and freedom you have. Another aspect that makes the utilization of Samus so interesting and engaging is the limitations. Your health is limited, your missiles, super missiles, power Oh yeah, one of the things I hate about Premiere After Effects, and I don't understand why it does that, but it's like it's a kind of a glitch that seems to happen with Adobe products. Where, uh, like when you change the position of, like you have two king frames, right? And we'll, we'll explore that more in the behind the scenes, potentially. But you have two like keyframes, and you're trying to move the position. Uh, if those keyframes are like too close together, or you're the movement between the two spots aren't enough in certain cases, um, then it's just like it'll the movement path glitches out sometimes, and it's like okay, let me. Let me move forward and then back again, and then we'll move forward. You know, or it'll do some like really weird stuff where it goes too far past where it was supposed to, and then it has to go back. Or the timing's weird. It's just something. So I had to deal with that a lot here. But now, but it, it to be fair, fire. likely yeah, you'll, you'll you see it. Sure. Fights. You have to actively work with those restrictions and the potential tension and anxiety that can come from lacking those resources, especially health. Because dying sets you back to your most recent save. So if you haven't saved in a while, it can be really stressful upping that level of engagement with the game. And everything in this game becomes more tense and maybe a little scary. The thriller moments can get a bigger response from the player in those scenarios. All in all, playing as Samus is fantastic. Ooh, here we go, chapter 4. Some interesting visual stuff here. 
Uh, I shouldn't have done this. Chapter four boss fights. Yay. Uh, there, I mean, I think there's some visual stuff that was really cool there. I think you can sort of see where it has issues. Um, but overall, I think it's quick and fine. I love this title. This is my favorite. You never think that surviving in a beast lizard, an occasionally invisible and untouchable ice orb, a floating stressed out mother, and a space pirate dragon would be so hard. Should have said parent. Should have said parent. Well, I mean, I think I said, yeah, no, I should have said, like, floating, stressed out, pregnant. Um, and monsters. I don't know what it is. A floating, stressed out, pregnant mother. I mean, mother's fine, I guess. It's fine. So I kind of wish. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Fine, fine. There you got the point across. And a space power drive would be so hard. But I like this. Uh... I, I think I definitely want my titles to be really weird, like moving forward, at least mostly weird. I think that's a that's a stylistic approach I want to keep doing. And I, I never want to drop that. I, I'm gonna do it in school. I'm gonna do it everywhere. I need I need it. I, I love it. It's weird. It's fun. It's cool. It's it's got stuff going for it. Um, so it takes a lot of inspiration from um, Gintama. Great, incredible show slash manga. Um, love the make a video on one day but it's incredible and it, 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 its titles for its episodes are, and chapters are really out there and it's uh, one of the reasons i want to do that is i took a lot of inspiration from it. and i think i love that approach and i want to take that and work in my own way uh, with that being said chapter four oh Yes, I love. Okay, okay real quick, real quick. Or what else? All right, so we're gonna frame by frame. All right, so one, I think these sections are cool. I think having the little kind of boss card uh, intro is really cool. I think it was a great idea on my part. I'm very proud of. It. I really liked it. I especially love the sound effect for the the title. Use your Japanese name. It fits better on the screen. It's more impactful. It's like, oh, great. Oh, man. This looks cool. Uh, I had to mess around with this one where just because the, 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 the way to do the thing from earlier in chapter one is brutal and it's extremely tedious. It takes forever. And I did not want it. I couldn't do it again. It's, it's so much. It's, it's, it's rough. So I try to do an alternative uh, where I have the more static background that moves, and then I have um, Samus running uh, across the screen in a similar capacity. Um, and then I, I kind of cut Samus running, kind of faded out the background a bit. And I just have that. So that's why you see the, the, the stuff around her. Is like you can see it. It's hard. It might be hard to see because it's like you gotta pay attention. Uh, it's definitely there. Yeah, it can become easier. Okay. And then it's back to this. And then there's an orientation change here. So one of the things I really wanted to do was I wanted to make Samus seem much smaller in comparison to the bigger kind of giant, ginormous threat that is. Craid, even though he's not really that much of a threat, but he's ginormous. He's huge. Right? Like, look. So the orientation changes using the 3D layer. Samus gets smaller. And it shifts to make him look also much bigger. Bam! And I love the impact. It's the wiggle effect. It's, it just looks perfect. The name. Japanese Kredo. Uh... Uh, tense. It's got the impact sound effect that I, that I made myself, and it sounds great. It sounds so good. I love. I I love how great it. It, it, it the impact sound effect sounds great. I'm uh, gonna be able to release that. Um, uh, you know, let you know all the people who want that that kind of sound effect in their stuff. I guess. I forgot. Um, but it. it it's cool. And all I did to make that sound effect, I, I'm not going to go over it. I don't want to spoil it. 
Uh, maybe I'll go over there. So all I did was I slammed the table with my hand. Where I'm at right now. And I fucked around with the, the sound that was created that I recorded. In like August. I don't remember what I, what I did. Like frequency. Something else. I should have saved it. That's cool. I just looked at the video. I watched that sort of gave me two episodes back. Not exactly. I had like a different program, but it worked out. Uh, but it sounds cool. Got the music in the background too. Kraid is an extremely yes. large monster to encounter. Before getting to the boss himself, the ground is layered with spikes and as Kraid continues to rise, you see spikes on the top of the room as well. Yeah, I don't like how I did that. The only way to reach Kraid are the platforms floating in the middle of the room. Unfortunately, getting to Kraid is not quite easy. His main attacking tools is a swipe with his claws, his projectile Can't fingers wait. bouncing around the screen like the DVD logo on your CRT. There's a better way of doing it. I think, I think if I had one of them, so we focus on one of the, we zoom in, focus on one of the claws, and then we like switch it in, uh, fly into like this kind of screen, have it like bounce everywhere, like gain the colors, uh, and then we bounce out. This does last for a little bit. It was much and lastly, longer. he shoots giant spiky shards. I think I figured out a better way to approach that also. That will shards out of his holes from his body. Real grotesque stuff. So, what can Samus do against this overwhelming threat? Well, your main tools are a lot of zoom in. But I think I am not. I'm gonna try to avoid in the future. Attack is a charge shot or missile specifically aimed at his open mouth. It's a tense fight particularly enhanced by music, threat of falling, and Kraid's noises. But he goes down oh, yeah. like and I switched to just that. Try to, to make him smaller and Samus is bigger. Orientage one. That was the end. And then the statue dies. Um, it, it's very much the same for the other boss fights, except for uh, I think there's less visual stuff. Well, there's this one. But you know, it's to kind of make it a little bit more visually high scene. Okay. Uh, but I don't think we need to go through. Well, I in game. Notice, destroy them. Extra craves was uh, upon crazy. entering the boss's cool. room. You Ray should gone. notice gun turrets spinning out green electric balls on the sides. You can destroy them I with missiles, them, revealing right. a visible electric current. Dragon's stick yellow belly damage involves the visible electricity from earlier. Once grabbed, Dragon was the grappling bait. Dead. Pretty much Dragon's floor, besides very. Yeah, there wasn't much to say about Dragon, because it was just like, he just kind of dies. A really confrontation in the making since the beginning of the game. The lead up to it, traversing through the draconic castle-like area, sets up a perfect tone for the eventual fight. The music also helps maximize this tension that finally climaxes upon entering the boss's room. The vertically long room is quiet, and then an eye pops up from the darkness, the famed space pirate himself. Ridley. Acid appears from the bottom, preventing you from using that space as protection, and Ridley himself is oh, by yeah, far the I most- forgot. I made this fight really, like, I did a lot of visual stuff for this fight. Dangerous to force to be encountered in the game. More, more stuff there. He's incredibly fast, shooting fire like, blasts, like, swiping or stabbing it. with his tail, and grabbing with his claws later. where he can bring there you all the way to the top of the room. While you shoot or there bomb him the like last any stop. other enemy, this fight can last it looks for it makes a him while. more chaotic and more In the entire time, it's an engaging, intense confrontation that gets more and more dire with Ridley's unrelenting I just kind of went wild. strength. But Samus will succeed. It was an interesting choice. I mean, I think there's aspects of it that I like. 
that make it like more like more 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 things going on. It's like shh, shh. zooming in, it's chipped in. Oh man, you know, crazy shit makes it more chaotic, which is kind of what I wanted. I wanted to make the fight seem like visually more chaotic because that's just kind of how it feels, right? You know, it's a scrap. Damn, it's rhythm. I thought it worked. Pick that one. Um, and then we get to. Oh yeah, it just it leans into it. Now that the four bosses have been defeated, the statue quickly seeps into the ground, opening up the area down the below. Oh, that worked out well. The end game awaits. Oh yeah, I went the opposite for the. I thought that was a good touch. Torian is the final area. There are two save points, oh, the yeah. second of which is- Oh my gosh, that actually looks pretty cool. Uh, obviously, I think there's certain things that would change. Probably would fix these up a little bit more. That's okay right now. Uh, but I did do that, and it does look pretty cool. Located I like the highlight. The, the highlight's great. No return. So saving there means you can't return to the rest of Zed. This area is filled with long vertical rooms, and what makes uh, these rooms yeah. particularly so. stand out and dangerous is the appearance of the infamous Metroids, who will siphon your health, but luckily can be frozen and then destroyed with a super missile, or maybe five missiles. Yeah, five missiles. I tested it. They can be a very powerful force against you. I think you might actually see it in the footage. I don't remember. No, As you, you move through the area, you'll eventually be stuck in an invincible in Metroid, and then it tries to do the same to Samus. Actually, originally I was going to have the, the full... Like this, what was it? The the subtitle, full title drop, ah uh, here. But Silence. It wasn't working. It After was Samus is almost killed outright, it then runs away as Samus continues to move Music forward. Continues Luckily, the next room gives you rooms that eventually leads you into uh, the very dangerous area where think Mother it, it Brain resides. You know, it's glowing rings are sent at you from various directions, so not taking damage is an extremely difficult task. Especially Damn, since you must task. use barriers to be able to move K. forward. There's a K, not task. But finally you come face to face with- tool speed run, right? We were not in a tool assisted speed run. We were, in a, we were doing a task. It's a hard task. Sorry. Just girl. Mother brain. She's trapped in her canister, so firing at her grotesque form isn't too much of a challenge. Besides avoiding the it's her lifely color. She's died. Oh, I forgot about that bit. She's died. <laughs> Pretty good. I think it's okay bit. More like this part too. The true Usually fight dynamic. against Mother Brain <laughs> starts now. The music blares and screeches, setting a horrifying tone for My what's voice to come. Blares and the head is the wow. one weak spot, so aim all shine for there. She'll move around and fire her own mix of attacks, aiming high and low. Eventually, though, she'll charge up and blast you with a destructive cool. rainbow wave, preventing you from moving and even lifting you into the air. The fight might just be over, but before it can deliver the final blow, the metric from earlier saves the day. The baby Samus had kept alive has transformed into a super Metroid. After absorbing the power from Mother Brain, the Metroid bestows it onto Samus alongside restoring health, but unfortunately at the cost of its own life. Oh, and then it has the actual. Well, this is hard to think about. I had to do a different thing. With this newfound power, Samus defeats Mother Brain. Yay! Mother Brain is dead. Did I not do the text? Or what did I do the text earlier? I the victory's short lived, yeah. however, as now Planet Zebes is set to explode oh, in three. It. And we have the bid back. Much, much, much less, I think. A lot less editing, a lot less of that really specific stuff to make it like super cool, like in the in the chapter one. Because at this point, one, I was really tired with the project, and two, it's just so much. It was actually impossible. 
it was impossible. Like doing the same thing I did for one for this was impossible. I just had I didn't have any of the resources to do it. I I didn't have uh, any anything. I don't I didn't have the sprite work stuff for the like to use. I like the the we see how like it glows red like that. Once just, again, you switch it. I can't do anything. So this is more basic editing. I mean, there's some of that level. Not basic, I guess. Like more of that stuff I can accomplish was in just the game footage itself. Like by like just just recording straight and not having multiple recordings or like using the more static imagery uh, to my advantage to make it like much. I did a little bit of that in the the first uh, chapter, like the first escape as well. Um, but it was a little sad not to be able to do do more of the the crazy shot and the crazy, super interesting looking uh, visuals. It was a lot harder. That's okay. Tension ramps up as Samus must quickly escape. I I got really like I I just kept messing around with the orientation a lot. Destroying obstacles in her path. I wanted to make it like a rainbow color. And like, we, oh, we have a place to go. We gotta. It's, it, it's like. It'll be more zo where the top is like closer to us. Like you, the viewer. And it's like, oh, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta climb. On certain aspects. Good powers. Um, but I think it's also just I like got. I just used it a lot. Before she leaves upon reaching the surface, she heads down through the morph oh, ball path from her way earlier. And uh, sets free the, edit script mistake. the trapped creatures who had remained on the planet who quickly make their own escape. I like this bit. I don't get it, but I like this part. Samus then makes it to her own ship and escapes the planet before it dramatically explodes as she flies away, reaching the end of Super Metroid. Silence and it's just the explosion. Oh no! Did Samus escape? Ah, the, the the animals escape. Find out in five seconds. Where's the animals? Oh, and that's the end of the video. And that's oh the, the credits. Yes, dude, I had just watched Cyberpunk Edge Run. I was like, oh, this is really really cool the way it did it. So let's try to replicate that. I think it really, really an experience out. of uh, Super I like Metroid. A lot. I think I would change certain things where I think I would make this more like I wouldn't do the middle one where you do that. I like straight. That's how it works as a thriller to some extent. Or like have it more. Hopefully, I did an okay job. Super Metroid so in every aspect of its design creates uh, and maintains cool. this kind of thing. Everything. Right. In the video, I don't know, it does look cool. I think it has like this text that works. Dude, that was hard to figure out, but I, I do like. It. Yeah, I think I would probably do it more like this or something long term. Or I think this worked really well. Um, it was just the whole gameplay. I like this part because it's, it's, it's the, this part especially is kind of cool. That's, that's the end of the video. But yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of visual. There's more visually engaging, enticing stuff throughout it. I think the music utility is good. I think the script's better than Super Yu Yu, Yu Hakusho, for sure. Um, arguably, I think in certain aspects it's probably better than the next script. But I think the visuals of the next project is even more, more refined in a variety of aspects. Where I think this one, the most refined it got probably early on, and the rest of the cuts are, I think, are really good throughout. Uh, within some of the stuff where it wanted to be more visually engaging with presentation and certain movement, uh, less stuff. Besides, like, uh, the, the, the boss fight stuff, which is really cool. It was so good. Like that, that was really cool. I think that was looks looks sick. I'm proud of that. Uh, overall, I think I'm proud of this project. I I think I'm I'm glad it is exists. Glad I, I uploaded it. I hope more people will watch it maybe and maybe like. I mean, I feel like it's better than the Roy video personally. Maybe people disagree. 
and they has like over five thousand views. Oh my god, not that good, but it's been around for a while. I mean, it got recommended. The algorithm picked it up pretty hard. Pretty cool. Well, I mean, not, not but still, I mean, it's pretty big. Um, I'm glad people like that one. Critical of it. Oh, but hey. Uh, this was shorter, it was more refined, we get to watch the video this time, yay. Um, and I think that's kind of the more basic of my self-analysis. I think I'll be doing the, the behind the scenes as a whole next week. And the week after that, we'll do, we'll focus on that one, the, the countdown game. Like, go really hard. Otherwise, hey, see you eventually. Hopefully, hopefully you keep watching. Like, comment, subscribe, all those things. Please, please, please. Appreciate. It.